Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and to another video. I'm Sally and this is Secret Life of a Seamstress, my channel where I talk all about sewing, knitting and other crafts as well. Thanks so much for joining me today and I really hope you're all doing well. So today's video I'm really excited about, it's going to be a recreate the look type video. So these kind of videos used to be my absolute favourite to make and I feel as though I haven't done one for so long. So like all of us, I think um, I'm really focused on thinking about things to make for spring and summer at the moment and um, really getting excited about the warmer weather. I have to say spring and summer is definitely my favourite sort of um, season or two seasons to sew for. I much more enjoy making um, floaty things to wear and viscose makes and lovely dresses and things like that. I feel as though sewing for winter, I do enjoy it, but it's much more of a kind of um, necessity kind of thing um, rather than with sewing. I feel as though I can get really creative and I really enjoy the different fabrics that I can use, different fabric and pattern combinations and things like that. So yeah, definitely getting very excited for summer sewing. And that's really where this um, video idea came from actually, my over excitement at um, summer sewing <laughs> and planning for all the summer makes. So before I get into what I'm going to be doing today, I'll just quickly share with you what I'm wearing. So today I'm wearing my Anthea blouse by Anna Allen. It's a recent make and it's something that I have been wanting to make for so long. There are so many lovely versions of the Anthea blouse out there. I love the big puffy sleeves and I really like the fabric that I've used for this one as well. It's a really nice Atelier brunette viscose crepe, so it's nice and drapey and comfortable to wear. So the way that I tend to plan what I want to make for the changing seasons is to always kind of keep an eye on things on the high street. I also use Pinterest quite a lot for inspiration, Instagram of course. And recently I've been using my Readly app to get lots of inspiration from magazines as well. So fashion magazines recommending things that are on trend um, and are on the high street and things that are in fashion. And I really like to see what they're recommending and just see whether or not there's anything that I would like to sew or recreate for my own wardrobe. So as I've mentioned before, I'm really enjoying using the Readly app. I use it for fashion, as I say, but I also like to use it for um, home magazines. I really enjoy looking at House Beautiful and Ideal Home. I love to take inspiration from those home magazines, not only for recreating sort of different seasonal looks in my own home, but also again for making things in my own home. And I also really enjoy reading the organisation tips and storage solutions and things like that that they have in those home magazines. And I also love to read lifestyle magazines as well, so things like Good Housekeeping, Women and Home and things like that. So it's not only me that uses the Readly app in my home. My daughter recently has been devouring the National Geographic Kids magazines and these are great for her because she really loves animals and they have loads of different facts in there all about animals and habitats habitats and um, things that are going on in the world as well but it's sort of written in a really child friendly way. My husband and my son are both into golf so they tend to read the golf magazines. It's really great as well that Readly also offer a wide range of um, how-to magazines so if you're wanting to learn how to knit or how to crochet there are beginner guides to those things as well as well as other hobbies like photography um, and drawing again and things like that. So it really is a useful app to have. Not only can you download magazines on the Readly app, but you can also download newspapers as well. So yeah, as I say, it has been a really good one for our whole family. We have it on all of our iPads um, and also on our phones as well. So if you are ever sitting in a waiting room or waiting to pick your children up, rather than just scrolling your phone, you can actually um, open up your Readly app and have a little read of a magazine while you're waiting. So if you'd like to try the Readly app for yourself, I will leave a link here and down below in the description of this video where you can sign up for two months free. So you can try out the Readly app, see if you like it, and if it's not for you, you can cancel it at any time. So I really hope that you'll pop over and give them a look. So yeah, in my Readly research and on my online research, so looking at Pinterest and things like that, what I was seeing a lot of was loads of denim. So I'm quite a big fan of denim really. I do love denim. I love a denim shirt. I love denim jeans, denim shorts, <laughs> lots and lots of denim. And that seems to be really in at the moment. So what seems to be around on the high street quite a lot at the moment is denim dresses, um, denim jumpsuits, denim play suits. 
and also double denim looks so like a pair of jeans and a denim shirt on the top as well and often sort of different colour denims mixed together too. So I thought that I would have a go at recreating my own denim look based on one of these high street looks and what I really want to make is a denim jumpsuit. So I really love the look of the denim jumpsuits that are on the high street that are a kind of shirt on the top half and then a wider leg pair of bottoms or bottoms <laughs> and then they're finished off with quite a wide tie belt. So my mind has been wearing again to think about how I could recreate one of these looks for my own wardrobe for spring and summer and I think what I'm gonna try is actually combining um, what I'm wearing today which is the Anthea blouse and my trusty old pair of Sapphire trousers. So last year I actually made two jumpsuits using the Sapphire trousers as the bottom part of the jumpsuit and I um, mashed together two other top patterns or top parts of other patterns um, and made a jumpsuit in that way. So I'm wondering if I can actually combine the Anthea blouse with these sleeves so I'd have the nice long sleeves and the kind of shirt top um, mash it together with the Sapphire trousers, have a nice comfy elasticated waist finished off by a nice fabric tie belt. That's what I'd like to make in my head anyway so I thought I would bring you along on the journey so that I can show you how I just adapt the patterns slightly to mash them together into a jumpsuit and just show you sort of the inner workings of that process. It's always a bit risky doing these kind of pattern that hacks and pattern mashups. You never quite know how they're gonna go, but that's all part of the fun, I think. So I have got for my project, um, three meters of this lovely washed cotton chambray, which I got from Minerva. It's really nice and really soft. I have three meters of this. Um, it does need a bit of a press, so I'm sorry if it's looking a little bit creased. It's a nice light denim and um, I think it will be really nice to wear. With all of these sort of hacks and things, there are some slight sort of adaptations and things that you do need to make uh, to the patterns in order to be able to mash them together into a jumpsuit. So I will need to shorten the blouse slightly and I will just need to make sure that it lines up with the top of these fire trousers as well so that everything can be elasticated in neatly at the waist. So that's my plan and I'll look forward to taking you along with me. scruffy today I wasn't necessarily going to talk to the camera today I was trying to voice over what I was doing while I was doing it and that didn't really work in the end <laughs> so hopefully you saw a little bit of the process of me adapting the pattern pieces so just to recap these are the patterns that I'm using the Anna Allen Anthea blouse and also the Sophia trousers pattern from the Make It Simple book by Tilly and the Buttons so the changes that you'll need to take into consideration when you're doing this kind of hack 
is number one, um, the length that you want the bodice part of your jumpsuit. So this is probably gonna vary from person to person. I actually needed to get my Sophia and Lyra hack out to remember how much I'd shortened the bodice by. Um, because I'm terrible at making any kind of notes on alterations and things like that that I do and I really need to be better at that. But you're going to have quite a high-waisted bottom here and then your drawstring or your elastic is going to bring it in at your natural waist. So it will feel as though you're cutting quite a short top. The original um, pattern piece that I got that measurement from was actually the Sapphire jumpsuit which is included in that same Make It Simple book. So if you do have that book, then you could always use the top part of that jumpsuit pattern to get an idea of how long you want the bodice pieces to be. So what I then needed to do was measure my Sophia bottoms pattern pieces and just to see how wide the waist was. So for my size, I think I make a size two in these. Um, the waist from the middle to the size is 26 centimeters. I would then need to bring my back bodice piece in to that amount. So the Anthea blouse is actually quite wide so you are taking in rather than reducing the width. So another thing you just need to take into consideration when you are measuring the width of the supplier trousers is that you are going to have a centre seam in these trousers that you won't have in the back of the blouse that you're using. So here um, the crotch seam is going to be reduced again by three centimeters overall because you're taking a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. So taking out that middle seam allowance then reduces the um, width of my back pattern piece by three centimeters. So this is the back piece of my uh, blouse pattern. So I've drawn a line here to where I want to reduce the length by from underarm to here, which is where the um, waistline is gonna be. Um, and then I need to bring in the blouse slightly because this is quite a wide blouse. So taking out my seam allowance for the crotch seam. So for the front piece, you need to do exactly the same, but this time you're gonna have the button band. So just make sure that you don't um, reduce your width right to the end of this. You just need to reduce the width up to the button band and where that starts, because you still need this extra width here for the button band piece. So again, I've just drawn a line here from um, where I'm gonna be shortening up to the waist and then where I need to take it in by. So that's how I do my changes. Obviously, everyone's sizes are gonna be different and the amount that you're gonna need to have the length and the width is going to be different for every person, but I really hope that gives you a slight overview of how I do it. So uh, I'm not an expert by any means in making these kind of changes, and I do tend to wing things a little bit. I'm definitely not the most mathematical-minded person, so I do tend to sometimes get calculations wrong. Um, I tend to do things more by eye than anything else, so I really hope that my measurements here have worked out. <laughs> anyway, I have drawn out all of my pattern pieces now. I've traced my new back and front pattern pieces for the Anthea blouse. And I'm really hoping it's all gonna to come together. Another slight change that I'm gonna to make to the blouse part of this jumpsuit is just to have a shorter sleeve. So a lazy thing that I tend to do sometimes, and I don't know if any of you do this, but um, the Anthea blouse sleeve actually has two cutting lines. So for the blouse, you normally make the longer length, which just comes down to just below your elbow or just above your elbow, but the blouse, sorry, the dress pattern piece actually has a shorter sleeve. So I've just cut to view B, which is the dress pattern. It makes the sleeve slightly shorter. And to do that, I've just literally lobbed off the end of the sleeve piece. <laughs> and if I come to make the blouse again and I want the longer sleeve, I will just literally sanitate that back on. That is a really lazy thing to do. And I should probably retrace the whole sleeve. But nonetheless, um, it works for me. Everything should be cut out now, so now I'm gonna just cut out my fabric pieces. Hi everyone, so it's the next day now. Uh, yesterday I got everything cut out and done. Another change that I made while I was cutting was actually just to lengthen the trouser pieces down because I thought I couldn't decide really whether or not I wanted to make this jumpsuit long length, like full length or culotte length, which I normally go for with the Sabaya trousers. Um, so since I had enough fabric, I just cut the legs longer and then I can decide once they're sewn up and done. 
So it's a lovely sunny morning this morning and I'm looking forward to getting on with sewing. So first of all, I'm gonna to sew together the Anthea blouse part of the jumpsuit. And I'm just literally gonna follow the instructions as they are, but obviously not hem it. I'm feeling kind of equal parts excited and nervous for this make actually. For some reason, I'm a bit worried about the calculations that I've made <laughs> for the blouse and the trousers coming together. So yeah, we'll see how it goes, but hopefully even if they're not absolutely perfect, there might be some alterations or bits and things I can do to make them fit properly. I don't know why I'm doubting myself. It's just that I'm not the strongest maths person in the world so sometimes um, it is a little bit scary when you have to calculate stuff anyway <laughs> I'm gonna get on and sew the Anthea blouse part and I'll catch up with you along the way So I've decided as I'm going along that I'll put the blouse together in kind of basic form. So I've sewed the side seams and the shoulder seams. I'm not going to overlock anything yet. And now I'm going to put together the trousers. And that way, before I overlock any seams or anything so that everything's final, if anything doesn't line up with the trousers, I can, I've got a bit of wiggle room there with the side seams. So yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Just makes me feel a little bit safe. You can tell I'm feeling a little bit nervous today, can't you? <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I think it's probably because I'm filming the process actually. It's making me a little bit more jittery about everything going right. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do now. I have made my spy trousers now. They look absolutely massive. <laughs> they are giants like this. It always makes me laugh when I sew fire trousers because they always look so humongous until you actually elasticate them in. Trousers are done and I've tried them up against my um, blouse section and I'm pleased to report that everything is fitting together as far as I can tell. So that's good and it's a little bit of a relief. <laughs> So I'm going to carry on sewing the Anthea blouse now. I'm just going to overlock the side seams and the shoulder seams that I had um, sewn together because I don't think I need to make any alterations to those, fingers crossed. And then I'll just continue with the Anthea blouse as it is. Um, and then we need to sew the two together. Okay, so it's been a little while since I stopped to talk. I um, kind of got carried away there and didn't film too much of the sewing process, but also I was kind of aware that the last sort of sew along video I did was an Anthea blouse. So I didn't think you probably needed to see me sewing more of um, another Anthea blouse. Anyway, here's where I am at the moment. So I've put the sleeves in now the shorter sleeves and um, that took ages <laughs> because there's so much gathering to do and it does take a little while to get everything nice and neat with these, I find, because the cuff is so narrow around the bottom. And then there's a lot of gathering to do on the sleeve heads as well. And I was really trying to get the gathering quite neat because I was very aware that in this fabric, it's not going to be very forgiving if you don't do your gathers neatly. So the last Anthea blouse I made was in a nice drapey viscose, which had quite a big print on it or a strong print and um, it was very forgiving in terms of um, you know getting away with um, not very neat gathers <laughs> I think I did okay with it in the end but um, yeah when you've got a plain fabric like this everything is going to show so I was really trying to be a bit neat there so what I need to do next is put the buttonholes on before I attach the top to the trousers so I'm just going to do those now I just um, mentioned as well the bias binding that I've used for the neckline so instead of just using the chambray I decided to use a little scrap of the Atelier Brunette uh, viscose that I had left over from my other Anthea blouse 
so that it just kind of shows through when the jumpsuit isn't on and I love this fabric so it was really nice to use a little bit of that. So now the time has come to attach the bottom to the top um, and see if I have a jumpsuit. Okay, so I have tried this on now and I think I'm okay. Um, one slight change that I did end up making, and I didn't film it, I'm sorry about that, but I just realised suddenly that the Sophia jumpsuit as it's made in the Tilly and the Buttons book has quite a wide waistband with a flat front and that's what I was originally going to sew. And then I realised that I'm actually making a belt to go with this. And I'm actually using the belt that comes with the Anthea pattern. And there's no real need for me to have that flat fronted waistband and also the size that it was at 4.5 centimetres was just gonna be a little bit too wide for my belt. So I just literally um, undid what I'd already sewn and re-sewed it at a 3.5 centimetre um, allowance rather than a 4.5 centimetre. So that was that change. So all I need to do now is just put my elastic in, make my belt and turn up the hem. And I think I'm gonna get on with that tonight because I need to get it done for my mental sanity. <laughs> I just really wanna see how this is gonna turn out. I am at that stage now where everything feels like such a mess and I'm feeling quite haggard. <laughs> But I just want to try and get it done and they're only, well they should only be small things to get done. So yeah, I'll catch up with you when I've done those things. Ta-da! So I'm here in my finished jumpsuit and I'm so pleased with how this turned out. I feel really excited about it. Um, so yeah, it all came together pretty okay in the end really. Um, I'm really pleased with how the Anthea blouse worked with the Sapphire trousers and I'm really pleased that the measurements that I took worked out okay in the end. <laughs> so obviously what I've created is not a copy or an exact replica of anything that I've seen on the high street but it is an interpretation of a trend that's around. I've interpreted it in a way that I know that I will wear. It's a really comfy outfit for me. It's not too out there. <laughs> I really quite like the boiler suit type looks that are around at the moment, but for me, I just know that I will not wear that kind of thing. It just feels a little bit restrictive and a little bit too, um, stiff for me. So I really hope this gives you um, a bit of an idea of how you can sometimes sort of take patterns that you know that you like and you enjoy making and wearing and adapt them to suit the trends that are around on the high street for the different seasons that are coming up. In terms of the fabric, I absolutely love this chambray. It's a washed um, cotton chambray, I think, from Minerva. I will list it down below. Um, I'm not always a fan of wearing cottons because I do find them quite stiff and not always enjoyable to wear but this one is really really soft. It has been washed once um, and I think it's the kind of chambray that will kind of soften up the more it gets washed. It was really lovely to sew with as well, it didn't fray or anything and I feel like it suits this whole jumpsuit perfectly really. And for me, it's the kind of fabric that I know I'll definitely want to wear. I did leave the legs long in the end. So instead of cutting to culotte length, I've decided to leave them full length. And um, I'm gonna see how I get on with those. It does feel a little bit kind of 70s, <laughs> which I actually really like. Um, so yeah, I'm really liking a longer leg trouser on a jumpsuit at the moment. Obviously, if I decide later on um, to cut them shorter, then I can do that. But if I had already cut them shorter and then I wanted them longer, you can't go back, can you? So I feel as though this is the safest way to do it. So I think that brings me to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoy seeing a little bit more of the process and the things that I think about when I am planning like a hack or a mashup or something. So I hope it was interesting. I'd love to make more of this kind of video because I just find it so much fun. <laughs> so if you would like to see more of this kind of video or if you have any ideas for me or anything, then do let me know in the comments below. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. I do post regularly every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. If you have enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you gave it a like as well. Otherwise, take care, everyone. Have a lovely day, and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.